Good afternoon. Again, it's Wednesday, and I am Pastor Debbie Upton from Center and Swatch United Methodist Churches in Colorado in the San Luis Valley. Last week, we looked at the story behind the song of O oh, Four Thousand Tongues to Sing. This week, we're going to be looking at Charles Wesley's song, um, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. It's found in the United Methodist Hymnal at 384. Love divine, all loves excelling. Joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation, enter every trembling heart. This is one of the loveliest hymns of Charles Wesley, who lived 1707 through 1788. It was first published in 1747 in his brother John Wesley's collection, rather dauntingly called Hymns for Those That Seek and Those That Have the Redemption in the Blood of Jesus Christ. But Charles Wesley must share some of the credit. He is thought to have been inspired, perhaps unconsciously, through a thoroughly pagan popular song of the day, Fairest Isle, All Isles Excelling, that was written by John Dryden for Act Two of Henry Purcell's opera King Arthur, which was in 1691. And the wonderful closing line turns out to be an unambiguous crib for a poem by Joseph Addison. When all thy mercies, O oh my God, my rising soul surveys, transported with a view, I'm lost in wonder, love, and praise. Writing hymn texts that are solidly based on scripture gives Wesley's hymns appeal across all denominational lines. It's estimated that during his lifetime, Wesley penned more than 9,000 poems of spiritual nature. 6,000 of these were hymns. His writings were passionate and well-crafted, conveying the true essence of Christian teaching. A substantial number of his writings were completed while riding on horseback to his evangelical meetings. What really set Charles apart from other hymn writers was his effective use of scriptural allusion, providing a spiritual roadmap where individuals could imagine a Christ-centered life. Scholars suggest that he was able to compose about 10 lines of verse uh, per day for 50 years. Charles' brother, John, sometimes served as editor to his hymns. John's typical response were, some are good, some were mediocre, and some were exceptional. John can also be credited with improving the singability of Charles' hymns. Nobody has ever satisfactorily explained the meaning of change from glory into glory in the last verse, though it has been suggested that that line relates to 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we all, with open face beholding in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Percy Dearmer points out how few of the earlier hymns dwell with the thought of God as love. The popularity in recent years of this fine Wesley hymn is probably due to the fact that God is addressed in light of love. The tunes Beecher and Hydrofall typically accompany the text in most hymnals. The hymn is written around a progression of thoughts, our prayers for the Holy Spirit, praying for the return of our Lord through the second coming, and prayers for the finalization of his new creation. In comparing him stanzas across several denominations, very minor variances occur, just mainly single words. However, in the hymnal 1982, which was Episcopal, stanza two is omitted. The original stander expressed the Wesleyan concept of second rest. When Charles referred to this in hymns, it specifically applied to second birth, or second blessing, or second gift. All of these are directed toward achieving of sanctification, 
or Christian perfection, which is an important theological tenet of Methodist preaching. There is no better way of describing the culmination of adhering to biblical teachings of Christ than in the stanza four, where Wesley's phrase, change from glory into glory, is almost directly from 2 Corinthians. Wesley describes a day in heaven when we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder and love and praise. We are fortunate recipients of poetic genius of Charles Wesley. I remember being in England at Charles Wesley's home in 2016 with some pilgrims that were on the Wesleyan pilgrimage with me. We stood in the bottom in his parlor and sang the lovely words, Love Divine. It was beautiful and an awe-inspiring experience. Listen to these words. Love divine, all loves excelling. Joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us a humble dwelling. All thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion. Pure unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation. Enter every trembling heart. Come, Almighty, to deliver. Let us all thy life receive. Suddenly return and never, never more thy temples leave. Thee we would be always blessing. Serve thee as the host above. Pray and praise thee without ceasing. Glory in thy perfect love. Finish in thy perfect love. Yes, beautiful words. And finally, finish then thy new creation, pure and spotless, let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Changed from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in lumber, wonder, love, and praise. What a hymn to sing during these times of restrictions. May you join me in the first verse of Love Divine. for you today. Love divine, all loves excelling. May we cling to that love in these times when they're, when we're there uncertain. Thank you and have a wonderful day.